it's about transformations of consciousness. Like that's what expression is. That's what myth is. That's what like the ultimate like narrative is like, and that's what I want art to do for my viewer or what I want art to do for me. I still feel this way now is like speaking in English doesn't translate to what I can say as a visual artist. And that my artwork really is my true expression. It feels like I've always known I was gonna be an artist. My mother says like I would just draw obsessively every day just as long as she can remember. Grew up in the Midwest, Chicago, Detroit, Columbus, Ohio, but I was always felt like I was gonna leave at some point. The only city I really knew that I was in love with was Boston. So I actually applied to go to Boston University to study art history. I wanna be in a place where I can like talk about these ideas and be more engaged with the community and go to the museum every day and like kind of be in the real world. The museum is like a sacred space where you're, you're with art in almost a the way I want people to approach my art and the way art making is for me. You can have profound relationships with these objects. I am here with the work of some artists that came before me and I feel like I, <laughs> on their, I know who you were, I'm you, here and now, and I see myself in you and we have this relationship together. I'm connecting with these artists, these other places that I've never lived that will never be again. We see a lot of work that has to do with burial and death and the afterlife and mythology dealing with like the liminal space between the here and the now and the other. As I walk around Boston, you think, what is gonna be here that's here right now in a hundred years? Everything is disposable. So like, what matters, what lasts? My goal is like my work a hundred years from now is gonna move some person in the same way it, it can now. That's why I want to be on the blockchain. <laughs>the story is what I learned is that first of all like gallery shows don't really do it for me like that whole artist lifestyle of like making a body of work hanging it in a gallery trying to sell a few pieces then it goes down in a month or two and then you make the next show is like there's something missing even though it's a physical process and the work exists and can be screened in theaters and museums and galleries that ultimately it's mostly seen online and that does lead to the NFT conversation but what started to happen with the internet and online communities, again, this seems so obvious to us now, but once people started having social media profiles and were able to connect online and being anonymous or being sort of people around, like it's easier to just say hi or communicate to a random person, right? People really liked the work and were kind of blown away by it, which was like, to me, really exciting. And you don't get that kind of immediate feedback typically as an artist. It's really cool, like, especially now in the NFT space and as digital art communities grow, that like, we're all in this together. We're all alive together at the same time. Like art is about each other. Art is essentially a communication device. It's, it's about humanity. I, this is what I love too about technology and the internet. And like, so many people are afraid that we're losing our humanity that we're going, you know, we're all behind screens, that this is unnatural, that it's it's not the real world. I feel like we're, at least my lifetime, the more technology advances, like the more human we're becoming. So when I got to Night Vision, which is a new piece, I had been playing with collage before a bit and, and with like figurative uh, imagery and, and reflections. And, and again, it's just like the way my life evolves. By the time I started the next piece, I said, I want to limit myself to just black ink and white out. It's the first time I've ever done one of these films that was just pure black and white only. And I want to try to reduce the, the figurative imagery as much as I possibly can. I, again, going to these films, I don't have a plan. I do not storyboard them. It's about purely going in frame by frame. So as I made Night Vision, I didn't know it was called Night Vision. I didn't know what it was. I found it through making it frame by frame. So night vision starts with a blank white piece of paper and that's the first frame. And then the first few frames you see like line work starts to come in frame by frame. And this is when I'm making it literally me figuring out where this is going. So part of the process for me of making this work does feel like, and I, a lot of artists talk about this, like when it's really going well, it doesn't feel like you're making it. It feels like something's communicating through you and you're, you're having a relationship with the, the piece and it's telling you where it wants to go. And so, 
This piece evolved over the course of a year. It's the macro and the micro. It's like inside of an atom and the entire universe. And now thinking like, maybe the universe is too small of a description. It's like the multiverses. It's like everything that could possibly exist. It's a fool's errand, but like a lot of the pieces about this, this pursuit of purity. My work is trying to like just take the, this big picture thinking and it's about sequential images through time. It's about expression through time. I'm doing the same thing painters do, same thing poets do, same thing dancers do. The format, the medium I'm using is this sort of like playing with what time is and how move, movement and transformation works. The only things that last are things that we as people like really think count and that, that changed the world and are so valuable that we can't erase them.